Tonight on The Roast, Mikhail Gorbachev denies rumours of his death and a date is set for the first debate between Kevin Rudd and Tony Abbott. But first, Mark Humphreys has the latest on former Queensland Premier Peter Beattie's return to politics. In the words of a man misquoting The Shining, here's Peter. Mr Beattie will run for the Queensland seat of Ford, replacing the pre-selected Labor candidate Des Hardman, who will now go back to his old job of not being famous. And if you're worried that Peter Beattie isn't a local candidate, rest assured that he just moved into the area yesterday, specifically into his brother's house, who is, quote, currently away. He's got my vote. Queensland Treasurer Tim Nichols has compared Beattie's return to the film Weekend at Bernie's, while Scott Emerson, Queensland's Transport Minister, said that it was more like Back to the Future. Come on, guys, not everything is like an 80s movie. You know what all this is actually like? It's like real life. That's a 70s movie. And although Keep the Bastards Honest was a slogan used by the Australian Democrats to describe the major parties, this major party candidate didn't hesitate to take it for himself. That if you don't have balance in pol politics, there's no one to keep the bastards honest. Newsflash, Peter, you are the bastards. You're also a slogan thief, but at least you're a humble bastard. I'm not the favourite in this seat. I am the underdog. You heard that right. The long-serving Premier who never lost an election is the underdog, and he's not the only one. I know I enter this election as the underdog. Looks like every man and his dog is an underdog. Feels like the ALP has someone in front of every candidate saying, you're feeling sleepy. You are in a state of calm. It doesn't matter if you were a successful and much-loved Queensland Premier for nine years. You are an underdog. It doesn't matter if you are the current Prime Prime Minister of Australia, you are an underdog. What are you? I am an underdog. Now go out and win this like you always do, you underdogs. And if the ALP can find two more underdogs, they'll have enough to form a Jamaican bobsled team. Now, it hasn't been an easy decision for Peter Beattie to step back into political life. He told reporters yesterday that to get his wife's approval to re-enter federal politics, it took a good bottle of red wine and a lot of soft talking. Maybe I should give that a try. Baby, put this funnel in your mouth. Listen, I need to go back into politics. Of course, I'll still have time for you and the kids, and it won't just be me gallivanting around, having a great old time, doing my politics while you sit at home bored. There's loads of things you can do in Canberra. I can organize Mahjong with Quentin Bryce, a trip to Questacon, on, we'll also get a Commonwealth car. They're the ones that have those little flags on the front. You love little flags. So we're in agreement. I'm running for parliament as an underdog. I love you, baby. So welcome back, Peter Beatty. In the words of an incompetent assassin, I missed you. For The Roast, I'm Mark Humphreys. Well, next up tonight, Kevin Rudd and Tony Abbott have finally stopped debating about when to have a debate and have agreed to hold a debate on Sunday. But that's about as far as the whole agreeing thing goes, with both sides still debating how the debate should be run. Kevin Rudd says each major TV network should host a debate during each week of the campaign, while Tony Abbott wants this Sunday's debate open to all networks, followed by two public forums in Sydney's Rooty Hill and Brisbane, and Christine Milne wants people to remember she's running too. Additionally, Labor proposed the debate be run in conjunction with Facebook, where the leaders would answer questions from people on social media, though hopefully ignore questions from Facebook itself, like do you want harder abs or want to meet fun young singles in your area? So to find out how this will affect the debate, we already have Jazz Twemlow at the debate's internet control room to see how things are building up. I'm here at the internet, which was a big mistake from the 90s. On it, people use Facebook, Twitter and YouTube comments to love themselves and anonymously shit on everything. People on the internet are so good at commenting responsibly, these idiots, plugged via their thumbs into a crap, hate speech version of The Matrix, are obviously who we should be bringing into a national debate. Oh, and now someone's hijacked the debate's hashtag with a selfie. Well, I'm sorry, but if you want one of our political leaders to respond to that, you're going to have to rephrase your terribly out-of-focus face in the form of a question. Honestly, moderating this torrent of internet slurry in the hope of finding one good question is going to be a more thankless task than rummaging through a Mount Everest of shit to find a truffle. From humanity's online nether regions, I'm Jazz Twemlow. Thank you, Jazz. So how then do we get to know the real Kevin and Tony instead of just seeing the political spin and rhetoric that these debates usually deliver us? Tom, so we need to give them a safe forum where both parties can be completely open with each other. I agree. A chance for a real conversation, an honest dialogue. Yes. Which is why I think we need to lock them in an elevator and secretly film them. Zach, what, what? Well, it's how I'm finding out who's best placed to replace you as host. But again, what? Yeah, let's watch. Clark. Rach. So I hear that you're going for the top job as well. Well, you know I have hosting experience from a few years ago. Oh yeah, well Tom did stab you in the back to take the job, so apparently you're not very good at it. Oh god. And so it begins. You know, this show would be destroyed under you. I mean, why do you think I cut down every single idea you have? Oh my god, are you taking a piss? Yeah, and I'm not even sorry. Oh god. 
Yeah, okay, that's a little gross, but once they get past the fighting, they might actually start being honest with one another. You want to know the truth, Clark? I've been the foreign correspondent here since this goddamn show began, and I don't even like foreigners. There, I said it. And you know what? I don't even like women either. Yeah, well, the only reason why I'm here is because I got booted out last time and I'm fueled by vengeance. Wow, they'd, they'd never say this in front of us. Yeah, I know, but I reckon if they go deeper, it might make even more sense. You know, I actually really liked the story that you did last night. Well, if I'm being honest, I steal your ideas. Yeah, me too. Really? <laughs> yeah. I don't understand why we're at each other's throats all the time. I mean, wouldn't it make more sense if we just got along? Yes! Oh, God. It's an amazing transformation. If they'd just been this honest to start with, I'd probably like them more. Yeah, I know, right? I hope it sticks. Um... Oh, sorry. Oh, right. Oh, thank God we're saved. Oh, I can't oh. believe that we actually found out that we're not really very different. <laughs> yeah, and if we just stop fighting, maybe we could actually make a difference. Yeah. 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 The job is mine! Get out! Get out of it! Get back here! Oh, you? And there you have it, Tom. Behind deliberately closed doors, we see the real Rachel Clark. And they are just horrible. Yeah, all the way to their rotten cause. But at least they can't hide it anymore. Yeah. I'm off. Well, finally tonight, former Soviet president and Louis Vuitton model Mikhail Gorbachev has been forced to deny rumours that he died after hackers published a false report on the Twitter accounts of a Russian news agency. Responding to the rumour online, Gorbachev said the hackers were hoping in vain because he's actually alive and well. Although he did say that on a website. I mean, there's no actual footage of him saying it and no recent sightings of Gorbachev in public. So the question should be asked, is it really a prank or did he actually die? Fortunately, we have reporters searching for him in every realm of existence. Team, any sign of Gorbachev? Sean? Not up here, Tom. Kara? Not down here, Tom. Jazz? Yeah, he's here, Tom. So it seems Gorbachev was telling the truth about not being dead, as evidenced by his telling something and not being dead. And how quickly time goes by. I mean, one day you're confirming an historic dialogue between the United States and the Soviet Union, the next you're updating your blog to confirm your aliveness. But fake celebrity deaths are nothing new. I mean, last October, Fidel Castro had to release a photo to prove he was still here. Jeff Goldblum had to reassure everyone he was OK after this debacle. We are reading reports that Jeff Goldblum has died whilst filming in New Zealand. Mm. This is completely, completely, well, New Zealand police are saying that he fell to his death. Jeff was, Goldblum. Was... And in 2011, news anchors inappropriately scared the crap out of viewers with this. The president is dead. <gasps> Well, President Obama is actually alive and well. Bad media! No! Hackers are allowed to scare us like that, but you're meant to be responsible. Still, those other celebs were all biggish names, whereas we haven't heard a whole lot about Gorbachev lately. I mean, aside from back in April, when he was too sick to turn up to Margaret Thatcher's funeral, who I'm pretty sure is dead, either that or she just hasn't released a statement. The last we'd really heard from Gorbachev was from last year when he had to deny that he was dead. So why do people keep going after him? Well, Gorbachev is disliked by many Russians for what they see as his role in the collapse of the Soviet Union. Although you have to wonder after this whether rumours of the Soviet Union's collapse might also have been exaggerated. In fact, let's check back in with our team. Guys, is the Soviet Union dead? Sean? Yes. Kara? Yes. And Jazz? That's an excellent question, Tom. After all, Putin is former KGB. He reinstated the communist era national anthem. And we're seeing daily increased government okay, Jazz, crackdowns. It was just a comedy bit. We've had far too much politics in this episode already. Good night.